Let me thank the gentlewoman and ranking subcommittee member from Missouri, Congresswoman Bush. Let me acknowledge our chair and uh, from the Oversight Committee uh, and as well a chair from Judiciary and of course the ranking members of the full committees on oversight, Congressman Raskin, and of course uh, the ranking member of the uh, Judicious Judiciary Committee, uh, Mr. Nadler. I thank them for their service and leadership. And I thank Mr. Chairman for uh, convening a hearing that will evidence a very sharp contrast in the issue of saving lives. I do want to acknowledge, in particular, the Moms Demand Action and the many other uh, good people of advocates who are wanting to have a reasonable protocol and structure for the owning of guns in America. I call you patriots and I'm grateful for your presence here today. I call those who sadly and devastatingly are either the family members of victims long gone or who are victims themselves. I thank you for your courage. I acknowledge the witnesses here today and I hope that they will understand that this democratic process is both a purpose with a purpose, and the purpose, of course, is truth. I'm incredulous that we are holding this hearing. I'm stunned. I'm almost in a sense of pain because we've had over 100 mass shootings only since the beginning of 2023 constant range of gunfire across America. Sometimes one would think during the week you would be relieved, but it is during the week, it is on the weekend, it's on Friday night, it's on Saturday night, it's on Sunday when many people in America are seeking the solace of faith. It is in our temples, synagogues, churches. It is in places in the park, schools, hospitals, and beyond. As far back as 1886, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives have been one of the countries, this country's most important federal agencies, fulfilling a multifaceted mission to protect American communities from violent crime while keeping us safe through regulation and enforcement of federal laws. Today's ATF's role is more crucial than ever before to help with public safety as there are more guns in the United States than people. The number one killer for children is homicide and the tool of the homicide are guns. Precious children, America's children, America's future. Fueled by politics and anxieties brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, firearm sales have surged uh, in 2021, Americans purchased approximately 19 million firearms, down 12.5 percent from 2020, according to several industry estimates. But 2021 was still the industry's second busiest year on record, while last year was the third busiest. We rely on the ATF to ensure firearms do not end up in the hands of those who should not have them. That's all. That's all they do. And to regulate the purchase and transfer of firearms, licensing of firearms, manufacturers and dealers, and innovations within the industry to ensure compliance with federal law, particularly when manufacturers and dealers attempt to circumvent long-standing statutes and regulation. Contrary to what some of my Republican colleagues might say, evidence shows that more guns lead to more shootings. Gun violence is now the leading cause of death among children, as I said, while an average of 70 women are shot and killed by an intimate partner every month and every day 316 people on average are shot. Congresswoman Bush's story is real, evident, and it is painful. In an average year, guns account for roughly two-thirds of homicides. However, in 2020, 77% of murders involve firearms. Despite these appalling statistics, congressional Republicans aided and abetted 
by extreme rulings from the federal judiciary in favor of possessing and carrying firearms have allowed our communities to be flooded with the guns of every kind, even in grocery stores and shopping at our major box stores on a Saturday morning. This push to reduce regulation and enforcement along with the surge in gun sales has only made communities across the country, rural, urban, and suburban, less safe. Tragically, mass shootings have become an all too common occurrence, and stolen guns, untraceable weapons, firearms purchased in states with fewer restrictions on gun purchases, ghost guns are trafficked through the iron pipeline into states with stiffer laws boosting their gun-related crimes. It is ironic that yesterday, with the two-year anniversary of the massacre of 10 people, including a police officer, at the King Super Supermarket in Boulder, Colorado, and Republicans are here today to attack the ATF and mount a defense of every firearms and modification involved in that shooting. I commend the ATF for their work in identifying a problem and providing guidance to prevent the harm created by the misuse of stabilizing braces which convert everyday firearms into killing machines. I want to just remind everybody of ghost guns, ghost guns that led a shootout in my city against three police officers. I would point out that the ATF performed a similar analysis during the previous administration to create a rule for bump stocks following the mass shooting in Las Vegas that left 60 people dead. In both cases, the firearms and hardware used by the shooters were legally purchased and possess, but it was evident that something had been done or had to be done after seeing the destruction they caused. And while the vast majority of guns are purchased by law-abiding citizens, there are many ways that legal guns end up in the hands of those who should not have them. And Democrats have never interfered with the purchase of law-abiding citizens under the Second Amendment. And while the vast majority of guns are purchased, uh, the reporting from ATF indicates that more than one million guns were stolen from private citizens in the five-year period from 2017 to 2021. That number is very likely much higher since there is no law that requires gun owners to report theft or loss of firearm. Again, ironically, Republicans have attacked the very da database that ATF maintains to track weapons and solve problems. The a ATF has taken affirmative steps to prevent future violence using technology to get violent criminals off the streets. In 2016, ATF created a, created a crime gun intelligence center launched as an interagency collaboration designed to collect, analyze, and distribute intelligence data about crime, guns, mass shootings, and major incidents across multiple jurisdictions. The 25 CGICs strategically located. Mr. Chairman, as I close, I would like to finish this last paragraph. Through their work, more than 616,000 investigative leads were generated by CGIs in 2020 and 490,800 crimes were traced back to their origins. In my home state and in Houston, police department and other local agencies joined the ATF Crime Gun Strike Force. Finally, that is why Democrats passed several additional pieces of legislation last Congress to ban assault weapons, bump stocks, ghost guns, and high-capacity magazines, encourage safe firearm storage practices, raise the age at which semi-automatic rifles can be purchased, pass a huge amount for violence intervention, yeah. and to keep firearms out of the hands of prohibited...